Welcome to the Flexum Training Series. This series of videos will offer you technical training on how to use different products and perform various functions with Flexum's line of clamp-on ultrasonic meters. Today we'll be watching video number one, which will teach you how to program a Flexum F601 portable flow meter. Other videos you might be interested in watching are numbers four and five. These videos will show you how to install transducers on a pipe and how to use a portable wall thickness gauge to get a more accurate measurement. For more advanced features, you can watch video number seven on how to download information from the meter into a PC, or video number 12, which covers information on how to retrieve diagnostics while measuring. But before we begin, we'd like to talk a little bit about what we'll be covering in some more detail. We're going to start by talking about how our keypad is laid out and how to navigate through our menu system. Next, we'll go over how to tell the meter about the pipe and fluid we'll be measuring. After that, we'll go through the process of actually starting a measurement. Lastly, we'll talk about how to tell the meter what you'd like to see on the screen when you're measuring if you'd like to change the default values. We call this output options. This is the order you'll want to use when setting up a meter as well. The first thing we're going to talk about today is the keypad of the F601. We have a power button, an escape or break button, and an enter key on the left and right sides of the keypad. The power button also doubles to clear values you've entered incorrectly. Hold down the power button for about a quarter of a second to turn the meter on. The off or break key serves two purposes. The first is to allow you to escape back to the main menu while navigating anywhere within the menu system. The second purpose of this button is to turn off the meter. To do this, we press the break key three times quickly. And of course, we use the enter key to confirm all of our choices and to navigate deeper into each menu system. Next, we have 10 number keys, 0 through 9. Four of these keys, the 4, 6, 2, and 8 keys, also perform double duty as arrow or navigation keys. Whenever we see a left and right arrow on the LCD, like on the main screen, we only have the option of scrolling left and right using the 4 and 6 respectively, or hitting enter or break. Hitting any other key will result in an error, or a beep. We can use the enter and break keys just as you would use them on a cell phone or any electronic device. Enter confirms items, or goes deeper into the menu structure, and break, or escape, returns you to the main menu. You'll also see up and down arrows on the screen. When we see these, we must use the 8 and 2 keys to scroll up or down. One thing to note here, all menus within the F601 scroll. This means that if we start going up or down, or even left or right, anywhere in the menus, we'll eventually get back to where we started. The up and down keys are mostly used for selecting from lists, such as materials, fluids, liners, and the like. And when we get to the appropriate item, just hit enter to select it. Now that we've talked about how to use the meter, we should look at how to actually program the meter to take a measurement. The main menu screen has four major program categories. They are abbreviated and stand for Parameters, Measurement, Options, and Special Functions. The first menu we will look at when setting up a new measurement is the Parameters menu. This is where we'll input all the information we have about the pipe, fluid, and liner if it's present. Start by scrolling to P-A-R for Parameters and hit Enter. Next, we can choose which channel to adjust parameters for. We have options of setting channels A, B, Y, or Z. A and B are the physical channels on top of the meter where we can plug in our transducers and channel Y and Z are calculated channels so we can either average or sum the output from the physical channels A and B. For now, let's configure just the A channel since most of you are probably interested in single channel measurement. We select channel A by scrolling up and down, then hit enter. Now we need to enter the outer diameter of our pipe. In this case, we'll be talking about carbon steel line. Be careful here to enter the actual outer diameter and not the nominal dimension. If we're trying to measure on a 6-inch pipe, for example, our outer diameter is actually 6.625 inches, not 6 inches. On a 12-inch pipe, our outer diameter is actually 12.75 inches and not 12 inches. We also supply a pipe chart with every portable meter and you can refer to this to find the actual diameter of most common pipes if you're not certain what you have. So the key here, and everywhere in our menu system, is to put in the actual dimensions and not the nominal ones. Let's enter the OD now for a 12 inch pipe, 12.75, and hit enter. 
Now we need to enter the actual wall thickness of our pipe. From a pipe chart, we see that a scheduled 40 carbon steel pipe has an actual wall thickness of 0.406 inches. So we enter 0.406 and hit enter. The other option we have here is to use our wall thickness gauge to get a more accurate measurement. We highly recommend this option if it's available. Because of the way ultrasonic meters work, the more accurate this number is, the more accurate your final measurement results will be. Now we're prompted to enter the pipe material. We have many different materials available in our material database to choose from. So chances are, no matter what you're trying to measure on, you'll see it here. As an option, if for some reason you don't see what you're looking for, we can always add items to this menu if you give us all the variables for your particular material. For now though, let's assume we're taking a measurement on a standard carbon steel line. I'm going to choose carbon steel from my list of materials and hit enter. Our next option is to choose if we have a lining present. For most measurements, this is a no, so we'll choose that and hit enter. Also notice that through all of our menus, whatever was chosen last time is the default value. Since last time I did a measurement, I chose no lining. The default value is still no. Roughness is a measurement of the microscopic imperfections in the surface of a material, and our database has an average value for each material by default. We recommend leaving this value at its default. Now hit enter. We're now asked which medium we're measuring. This is the liquid in your pipe. Choose the liquid we want to measure from our extensive list and hit enter. For this example, we can choose water, but we also have many other liquids such as high and low API crude, beer, mobile therm, and many, many more. Also, if you do not see a medium listed that you like to measure, contact a Flexum representative to find out how we can install new mediums into your meter for you, either before or after your purchase. The last option under the parameters section we need to enter is the medium temperature. Here we need to put in an approximate value for the temperature of your fluid. This is only used to help the meter figure out where to tell you to install the transducers. Don't worry if you don't have the exact temperature. You can even put your hand on the pipe and make a guess if you don't know. And this is usually more than sufficient to get a good placement distance for your transducers. Of course, flexometers can measure on fluids up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. So make sure you don't touch one of those. Hitting enter this last time has brought you back to the main screen. And now we're ready to begin a measurement with our meter. I'm going to start by navigating to the measurement menu. This is labeled as MEA on our screen. Hit enter to go into the menu. The first option we have is the channel we want to begin measuring on. With our meter, we can actually enable and disable the channels we want to use individually by navigating to the channel using the left and right keys, and then using the up and down arrows to place or remove a check mark next to each channel. Since we're only using channel A, we'll make sure that channel A is enabled and hit enter. The next screen we're presented with is measure point number. This option allows us to give either a numeric or alphanumeric name to each measurement stored in the data logger when we're doing multiple measurements. I've selected numeric names, so I'll call this measure point number one and hit enter. Now we're given a recommendation of the number of sound paths. Sound paths are the number of times the ultrasonic wave traverses the fluid. If the beam goes straight through the fluid once, we call this direct or one sound path and we must mount our transducers on opposite sides of the pipe. We call this direct mounting. The more preferable way to mount our transducers is in what we call reflect mode, or two sound path. In this mounting system, the sound goes through the fluid twice, bouncing off the opposite wall of the pipe once, and we mount our transducers on the same side of the pipe, one several inches downstream of the other. This has several benefits, not the least of which is that it's physically much easier to get proper placement and access to the transducers like this. You can watch video number 4 for more information on how to install our transducers on a pipe. For now, let's choose two sound paths or reflect mode and hit enter. This brings us to the transducer distance screen. Now that we told the meter how many sound paths to use, it's recommending the optimal distance to place our transducers apart on the pipe. And remember, since this is reflect mode, we'll have both transducers on the same side of the pipe. This makes it very easy to measure the distance the meter is recommending. We simply measure from the face of one transducer to the face of the other. The only problem here is that on my tape measure I can't find 5.73 and 5.64 inches. I actually install our transducers at the closest distance we can easily measure on a tape measure near what our meter is recommending. 
We try to stay within a plus or minus quarter of an inch of the meter's recommended distance. And then we tell the meter the actual distance we place the transducers at. So now that we know where the meter wants us to put the transducers, we can hit enter. This brings us to the signal quality screen. Here is where we'd actually mount our transducers on the pipe at a distance as close to the recommended distance and still easily found on a tape measure as I've just described. For our case, our meter recommended 5.64 inches, so we're going to mount at 5.75 inches. We could have just as correctly chosen to mount at 5.5 inches. Now since we've already mounted our transducers, we'll need 2.5 to 3 bars of signal and a green light on the keypad. We have a green light, meaning we can start measuring, and 6 bars or 60% signal quality. This is great signal. Let's hit enter now that we've verified we have a good signal and are ready to measure. Now we get to tell the meter exactly how far apart we actually put our transducers. Input the actual distance we place the transducers at, 5.75 inches, and hit enter. And now we're reading volume and flow on our display. You can look at the sound speed of your fluid as verification that the meter is installed properly. For water, we have included a chart of sound speed versus temperature for pure water. For other liquids, you can check online for approximate sound speeds. Hit the three key twice to see sound speed on your display. For other diagnostic functions, you can also play with the 9, 3, and enter keys to check diagnostics on your measurement. For full details of how to do this, please watch video number 12. Lastly, we're going to look at the output options menu. You can get here by hitting break on the keypad to stop measurement and scrolling over to out, then hit enter. You want to access the output options menu if you need to change any of the default values such as how often data points are stored in the meter or if you'd like to read something aside from volume flow in US gallons per minute. The first thing we have here is again a choice of the channels we'd like to set up output options for. Just like in the parameters, we have options of setting channels A, B, Y, or Z. For now, let's configure just the A channel since most of you are probably interested in single point measurement. Now we need to pick the unit we'd like to see. We could choose U.S. units, such as U.S. gallons per minute. We could choose SI units of meters cubed per second or cubic meters per minute. We can even choose in barrels per hour, minute, day, or seconds if we wish. And if that's not enough, if we take in a pressure and or temperature input, we can output in volume flow corrected to standard barrels per day via internal computations. For now, though, let's choose U.S. gallons per minute as our unit and hit enter to confirm. The next option we have if your meter is enabled for it, is to choose whether you are taking in a temperature via an RTD attached to your pipe for channel A. If we're not, and for now we're not, we can simply hit enter since we're already on no. If your meter is not enabled for temperature measurement, you won't see this question. Dampening is the amount of averaging the meter will perform while measuring. For example, we generally use 30 seconds of dampening for our measurements. This means that the meter will average 30 seconds of flow data and every subsequent second, the meter will take in one additional second of data and throw out data from 31 seconds previous. This way we're always looking at the average flow rate over the last 30 seconds. Of course, if you like to average over a shorter or longer period of time, this is perfectly fine as well. For now though, let's use 30 seconds, and since it's already in the meter, we can simply hit enter to confirm. This next option is very important. We have several different ways of taking information out of the meter. We could simply look at the display, we could take a 4 to 20 milliamp signal out to a PLC, or we could store data in the meter itself in our 100,000 point internal data logger and retrieve the information to view on a computer at a later time. This is the purpose of stored measured values. We generally recommend to keep this turned on since there is absolutely no downside in doing so. However, if for whatever reason you would choose to turn this off, we could simply scroll left over to off to disable it. For now though, Let's leave this as the default of on and hit enter. Serial output allows us to connect directly to a PC while taking measurements and display or download that information in real time. If we physically have a serial cable between the computer and flow meter, we could choose yes. In our case, we're not using this. And more than likely you won't be either, so we'll choose no and hit enter to confirm. Storage rate allows us to choose how often to store a data point in our internal data logger. Once a minute is fine for a measurement over 20 or 30 minutes. At once an hour, the meter will store around one month of data. 
However, you may set this value to as often or infrequently as you'd like. For now, let's set this to once per minute and hit enter to confirm. Lastly, if your meter does have an analog output, you would have the option of setting its values here. Now that we're fully through the output options menu, we're done. Today we've covered the basics of the F601 portable flow meter. We've seen how the keypad is laid out and how to navigate the menu system. We've also seen how to enter pipe and fluid parameters and how to actually start a measurement. And lastly, we talked about how to tell the meter what you'd like to see on the screen when you're measuring and how to change default values for other functions. Thank you for spending some time with us today. All of us here at Flexum look forward to hearing how we can help you achieve all of your measurement goals for your facility.